Holler Valley Cooks. Today, I had six ears of corn. So, we're cutting it off the cob today, making some good old corn for supper. <music> a few clothes so you can hear my wash from the background but I've got some corn that I just shut and I'm gonna make some cream corn out of it I've got a new scrubber I really like it I've got it on the website it's a lodge and um, and of course it's used for your cast iron but also I'm gonna use it for my veggies so I'm gonna brush the corn silk off of them with this first lay them up here and then um, then I'm going to show you how to cut it off the cob. This is just corn from the grocery store. I think I actually got this at Walmart. I had a nice conversation with a little older gentleman while I was standing there about St. Mary's. He grew up here his whole life. He was telling me a little bit about growing up here and how much it has grown. So I enjoy talking to him. But I like corn on the cob, and I've showed you how to do it pretty recently. But the kids really like for me to cut it off the cob. So I thought I would cut this off the cob today. I've got a chicken in the uh, crock pot just to make it easy for a Saturday. And it's so hot, I don't want to heat up nothing today in the kitchen. So what I typically do is I cut it off the cob like that. I'm getting all the silks out of here before I start. Rinse out my sink. I love having a garbage disposal. I haven't had one since I lived in an apartment when I was in my early 20s. And I am so enjoying the garbage disposal. Okay, I'm going to lay these right here and get me down a bowl. And start cutting us off the cob. So I typically start with a really sharp knife. My set of knives, I have uh, cut codes. They're really, really nice. Uh, this is a serrated, I like to use a serrated blade when I do my corn on the cob. Of course you don't have to. When I was growing up, my mama and granny always used those with the silver handle. I don't even think I got one anymore. Um, I don't think I brought them with me. But I'm going to, uh, cut, I usually cut it in at least two layers, and I cut it pretty small. I do not cut large, big pieces off of it because I like it creamed. So you can see on my knife about how big and how thick these pieces are. They're really thin. So I cut, cut, and then I scrape once I'm done. Then I'll go around the edge and scrape. But first I cut. You can cut. This knife is so good, I can just go down it like that. And don't leave a lot of corn on it. Make sure you scrape it good. And I've told y'all, when we grew up, we made soup and out of our field corn because it kept it from being too sweet. Tomatoes are already really sweet. And when you put corn in vegetable soup, if it's sweet corn and you have the sweet tomatoes, to me, it just is too sweet. So we would use our field corn. A lot of people think that you don't eat field corn because that's what everybody feeds the cows and the pigs and the animals on the farm, but we grew up eating it as well. Now it only has about a week when it's ripe, so you gotta get out there and pick it when it's prime. And if you miss it by a couple of days, you're too late. Um, it also sours, so you can't take it off the stalk and store it for a week before you cut it off the cob. You really should cut it off the day that you pick it or the next day at least. And it better be conditioned if you wait till the next day. Um, so, 
if you know of any farmers that grow field corn and you've never tried it, you're not going to get it anywhere but on a farm. You're not going to find it in a market. You're not going to find it in the store. You would actually have to go knock on somebody's door that's growing corn in their field and ask them, is that field corn? And then you could ask them, do they mind you getting a couple of, uh, you know, some of it when, it's com when it comes in. And more than likely, they're going to say, sure, you can have some. Because it's not like you're going to be cutting it to sell to people. So I cut once, I cut again. I'm going to show y'all how thin that is. I usually go around it when I'm not talking. And then I go around it again. I typically rest the end of the cob in the bottom of my bowl because it's hard for me to hold it up long enough to cut off a bunch of corn. I'm glad I don't have a lot to put up or I would get worn out really quick. And it's really not hard to do this. Now, I know now you can buy corn in a tube out of the freezer section. And it's pretty good um, if you get the white. But it does have a lot of water in it. So I will tell you that much. So if you think you're going to get a tube of corn and it's going to be enough to serve several people, you better get at least two tubes because it's mostly water. Now, when they first came out with it, to me, it had more corn in it than it does now. But just like everybody else, I guess, to try to save a little money, they've added more water to their corn. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And I'm not trying to badmouth anybody. If you don't have the energy to stand up and do this, um, it's much better to buy it that way than to eat, try to eat cream corn out of a can. It's really sweet. The only thing I use cream corn out of a can for, absolutely only thing, is Nana's Mexican cornbread in our first volume cookbook. So when you scrape it, it scrapes what starch is in against the cob. It scrapes that into your corn and it'll help it have a little starch to it. If you want thick cream corn, um, I guess for the most part we make for what people would call fried corn. Because I don't always thicken it with a little corn starch because this corn that you buy today you don't have enough starch in it to thicken it, make it creamy. You also have to use a little corn starch when you cook it. If you don't want to do that, then you're pretty much just eating fried corn, and that's just throwing it in there with some butter or some bacon grease and cooking it on a high heat for about five, really five to ten minutes at the most, and serving it up. So you don't add, um, I mean, you add a little water to it, but you don't add cream or milk, and you don't add cornstarch. That would be cream corn. I think that would be my difference between cream corn and fried corn would be if you make, a, you know, a thicker gravy with the cornstarch in it and put a little milk in it. That would be my idea of cream corn. Now, once you get finished, then you're going to add a little water to it, enough just to the top of the corn. Now you can make this in the microwave if you want to, uh, but I'm going to put this on the stove top. We'll put in a little butter and I'll see you at the stove top. All right, in our first volume cookbook, you'll find cream corn on page 110. Really, I've got cream corn, parenthesis, fried corn, and I've got corn, water, salt, pepper, milk, butter, or margarine. And really and truly, if you do it this way, it's not creamy 
with this kind of corn that you buy in the store unless you use a little cornstarch. So I'll put an option on recipe revisions and y'all can write it in in your cookbooks on page 110 to add the cornstarch to the milk before you make this corn. And I'll put that under the recipe revisions on my website. And you can make it with just water if you want to. You don't have to put milk in it unless you're gonna use the cornstarch. Today, I'm just frying this up. I don't think I have any bacon grease saved. So I won't be putting any bacon grease in it. Some people put it in there, some people don't. I don't, most of the time I just use butter. So what we're going to do is let that butter melt in this corn, here's our corn. So you're just gonna add water up to the top of the corn. So it doesn't matter how much you decide to cut off, that will determine the amount of water really you need to put in it. I know y'all like recipes, but Sometimes you don't absolutely have to. See how the corn should be right at the top of the water line, just like that. And now we're gonna add a little salt and pepper to it. Excuse my reach. So I'm gonna add some salt and some pepper. And that's pretty much all I want in my corn today. I'm not going to use milk. I'm not going to use cornstarch. And I am only going to put the butter in there for the oil. And all I'm going to do is simmer this. On a, um, at a, I'm going to bring it up to a boil and let most of the water boil off of it. And then I'm going to pour it up for supper. It's only going to take this. Once it starts to boil, the corn's done in five minutes. What you're really doing is just uh, cooking the water off. If for any reason you've got corn that's a little tough and you've waited too long to cut it off the cob, instead of using water, make sure you use milk because it will soften the kernels up for you a little bit. So let's bring this to a boil. Smells good, y'all. You know what? I know a lot of y'all are probably gonna say, well, you could have added onions, or you could have put in bacon grease, or you could have done this or that, but let me just say this. Many times when I eat vegetables, I just like plain of salt, pepper, and butter. To me, there's nothing that makes them taste any better. I mean all of them, just about. That's all you need. So, all I'm gonna do is simmer this until most of the water's off of it. I'm gonna set my timer for at least five minutes so I know it gets done. You should all use a timer when you're trying to uh, cook stuff. There's something black right there. I'm trying to see what it is. Piece of pepper. This pepper I used a grinder to grind so it has some bigger pieces in it. It won't take it that long to cook down. Many of y'all are like me when you grew up. Y'all grew corn and you would cut it off the cob and mama always froze it. She never took the time to can it because corn is something that you gotta be really careful with to can. I mean, it's one thing to add a few kernels to your vegetable soup when you can it, but it's another thing to can corn. It takes a long time. So um, Mama would always cook it up like this and put it in freezer containers and freeze it. We had a deep freezer. And then she would get the corn out and it sure was good in the winter time to get some good garden corn with supper. If you've never experienced walking out in a cornfield to take some corn off the stalks, um, there's nothing like it. 
you better go uh, early so you don't get too hot. And the bad thing about going early is the spiders are still in place. So spiders love corn, and there's always spider webs everywhere in between the stalks. So um, you have to watch what you're doing if you're scared of spiders. And don't ask me what kind of spiders, just plain old spiders. They're not the kind that will kill you if they bite you or nothing crazy. But I just remember as, you know, anytime I've ever went and picked corn, I hated getting in the spiders. But you get the good stuff. It's worth it in the end. Now see, this corn is not going to be creamy. It's just going to be corn that you can eat. It's just off the cob. See that? If this were field corn and I did that, you wouldn't even have to add cornstarch. It would already be thick. Field corn has a lot of starch in it. Um, all the corns that you buy do not now. So if you want it to thicken, then you've got to add a little cornstarch. Uh, just take a little milk in a bowl, about a cup of milk, and add you for about six stalks of corn, this is about how much we have. I would put in a couple of tablespoons of cornstarch in a cup of milk. Mix it really well with a whisk so that it's not lumpy. And pour it in here to thicken it just like you would a roast, gravy, or anything else. And then you would have nice pretty cream corn. We've got a minute and 30 seconds left on our five minute timer. And I will probably leave a little bit of water in this corn because I'm going to pour it up for the day and put it up for supper. Just let it sit for a minute and then put it in the fridge and then warm it back up at supper time. Get my supper done early today. So this is my bowl that I use to pour it out in. I'm going to go over there and rinse it out and then we're going to pour it up. Alright, so we're going to pour this up. I've got chicken in the crock pot. We'll have some corn. And I'll make some fried potatoes or something like that since the, the chicken's in the crock pot and it'll be soft texture. This corn is a soft texture, so I need something crunchy on the plate, so I'll probably fry up some good potatoes. Thanks for watching Colored Valley Cooks, where we cook like Mama did, where we eat like the family did, right? Thanks for tuning in. Please hit the subscribe button. And I will see y'all next time on Collard Valley Cooks. Bye, y'all. Love ya.